Mahatma Gandhi very famously said that India lives in its small towns and villages. The story of our subject today on this show also begins in one such little known Gujarati town. Today, in his own words, he will narrate the hardships, the ups and downs of his life. A man who would go on to achieve so much and give back a lot more. This is Sudhir Parekh's journey. Well, uh, I was born in uh, a town called Pitlad, uh, Kera district, Gujarat. Uh, I studied uh, since uh, my f- uh, father was government uh, civil servant. So I studied in a different school. Uh, every three years, we uh, he used to get uh, transferred from uh, one place to another posting. So we, I studied in different uh, cities in the in the state of Gujarat. I mean, that time it, it was state of the Maharashtra. Um, it's a Mumbai state, Bombay state, uh, and so we moved from from uh, kind of uh, town to town. And so I had I studied in. in in Gujarati, I studied in Marathi during my uh, elementary school. Then I studied in English medium. And then uh, in 1960, we came when Gujarat, uh, Gujarat State uh, happened, we came back to Ahmedabad. And I did my medical school in Ahmedabad, did my MBBS and uh, post graduation in Ahmedabad. And after that, I left for. Uh, uh, England uh, for uh, further study. We are uh, f- uh, two brothers and three sisters. We all are, uh, I mean, four, uh, four of us are doctors and one is an engineer. So uh, really our parents uh, uh, gave us a very good education to all of us. A man who now lives in a mansion in New Jersey, it's hard to imagine how simple and small a house he grew up in. Listen on. Uh, even uh, g- gazette officers in India uh, used to have, of course, uh, uh, according to Indian standard, it was comfortable uh, apartment. But again, it's a small apartment for uh, uh, seven people altogether in the family. So obviously, uh, I mean, we learn to accommodate, learn to uh, live to kind of uh, uh, live, uh, accommodate to each other, and sometimes we ended up, uh, uh, you know, during daytime we ended up st- studying in the either library or in the park uh, close to our home, and it was it was it was uh, fun and it was uh, really a great experience. Uh, if you look back now. Well, I studied in the BJ Medical College, Ahmedabad, and we all, I mean, uh, we have, I mean, I'm very, uh, in the college also, I was very kind of uh, in le- uh, leadership position. I always wanted to be a leader of the uh, students, and uh, we studied, uh, uh, I mean, very de- diligently, and uh, uh, always came for first, in our class, uh, also uh, I got a, uh, a gold medal for uh, uh, MBBS uh, uh, final examination for in um, in the subject of the medicine. In uh, the medical education was really uh, a great experience, and uh, there were, we have also uh, sorts of friend. Uh, some some friends were from the high class, I mean uh, rich class, some from middle class, some from the poor class, but we all get along uh, very well and we all studied together and help each other uh, immensely. The first taste of the Western world for Mr. Parikh came in the form of United Kingdom. Well, I was uh, doing my post graduation uh, in uh, pediatrics uh, at uh, BJ Medical College. That time, we uh, we had a WHO project going on in our department. 
So there are two consultants came from uh, England, uh, WHO consultant to uh, help us out in that project. Uh, and while I was working with them, they were so, uh, so much impressed and pleased with my work. So uh, one of the consultants offered me that uh, if, you are, uh, if I'm interested in uh, coming to England, he will be very happy to help me out. And I'm, I always wanted to go to England rather than coming to USA uh, because all our professors and teachers, they all were uh, English trained, uh, FRCS and MRCP. So I always wanted to do that and, and therefore, and then come back to India and uh, practice there. Uh, so when this uh, consultant offered me this uh, help, so readily I accepted, I was very thrilled. And that's how I, uh, instead of coming directly to USA, I went to UK and I spent uh, two and a half years in uh, a hospital called St. Bartholomew Hospital in England, which is uh, uh, equivalent of uh, or uh, par with the Harvard um, Medical School here in, the, in the Boston. Uh, and it was really a great uh, pleasure, pleasure and privilege to be in that hospital because that time out of 600 uh, physicians in that hospital, I was only Indian descent uh, physician uh, working uh, uh, or had an opportunity to work there. And so I was very pleased and uh, fortunate uh, uh, that time. And after that, I moved to, came to USA and did my uh, post-graduation post in asthma, allergy, and immunology. My, these two professors uh, who really uh, uh, kind of mold, molded my life uh, career is Dr. Uh, Desai, who was chairman of the, uh, uh, in India, in our BJ Medical College, and uh, Dr. Brown, who is a consultant uh, in uh, England at St. Bartholomew Hospital. They really helped me out, and uh, the quality I learned from them, that hard work, persistent work, the honesty and uh, uh, honest work, it always pays off and uh, always uh, uh, brings you up uh, at, at any height. And, and that really uh, give, uh, gave me really a lot of encouragement and a lot of, uh, because they put me into the, such a, a great environment of uh, St. Bartholomew Hospital where usually uh, our uh, being a foreign uh, doctors at that time, 40 years ago, was it was impossible to be there, and I was there, and I had opportunity to learn and uh, and uh, explore the uh, post post uh, post graduation study there. So I really um, very much uh, uh, obliged and very much uh, and kind of uh, uh, appreciative of uh, those two professors in my life. His humility intact. He never skips a chance to thank his professors. Soon, in 1975, he came to United States of America. Then I came to the place where I destined to be, United States of America. Well, I came uh, here for uh, on vacation, and I may, uh, came to my sister's place, uh, my elder sister who used to be living in the New York City. And uh, then also quite a few of my classmates and friends, they all were here in uh, USA, uh, came directly from Ahmedabad to uh, uh, India to USA. And uh, uh, unlike me, who I went in first to United Kingdom. But when I came here, everyone was uh, saying uh, and convincing me that I should uh, uh, come to USA uh, because USA has better opportunities, better uh, education, better uh, research facilities. And, uh, and they were able to convince me. And I just uh, said that, of course, uh, I will come if I get in a really very prestigious uh, uh, hospital uh, residency uh, position. And luckily, because uh, I was at uh, St. Bartholomew Hospital in England, which is supposed to be a number one uh, hospital in England, because of that training and experience, I got uh, directly uh, at uh, second level, uh, year position at St. Luke's uh, Hospital, which is affiliated with the Columbia, St. Luke's Columbia program, and I was lucky. And after that, I did my uh, post-post graduation, which is specialization in asthma, allergy, and immunology at New York Medical College uh, Hospital. And uh, after that, finishing that, 
I started my private practice in 1980. It was around this time that he came across an idea that will turn him into an entrepreneur. So I completed my uh, uh, training in asthma, allergy and immunology in 1980. I become uh, uh, specialized in asthma, allergy and board certified in asthma, allergy and immunology. And then I started my private practice in, uh, started from Hoboken, New Jersey. Uh, it was very busy practice uh, as soon as I started within no, no time. But then I decided that uh, in order to really make it uh, uh, this uh, uh, medical practice into the entrepreneurship, so I got an idea one day that why not to acquire uh, all the retiring uh, allergy, asthma, and immunology practices in the tri-state area. And I wrote to retiring physicians, I mean allergists, uh, those who are in the area, and started uh, acquiring uh, practices one after another. And uh, now we have, uh, between New York and New Jersey state, we have uh, 26 locations, uh, 26 practices, full-time practices, I acquired from the other uh, retired uh, asthma allergy specialist and we have 200 employees and we are the largest uh, one man uh, own uh, uh, group in asthma allergy immunology in the country uh, and, there, and I really feel very uh, proud and uh, thank uh, America, uh, USA who gave me this opportunity to make my medical business, uh, medical uh, field into a big entrepreneurship to serve the more people and uh, better quality care to the uh, people of the New York, New Jersey area. I always believed and I always wanted to give back to my community, my country, Mother India, as well as my fellow Indian American in this country. Mr. Parikh has always believed in giving back to the society through charity and community service. Well, uh, I always believe that uh, uh, always, it's always, it's a double, even triple pleasure to, to give, uh, to give to someone because when you are giving, uh, you are not only, uh, you get uh, pleasure, but a person who is receiving will, will get pleasure as well as when you see the person who is receiving get, gets pleasure, you also get a, another second pleasure. And not only that, but uh, you know, I came from very humble background. When I was growing up, uh, most, most of the time I studied uh, in medical school or, or even I, when I left India, I always got some kind of a scholarship, merit scholarship to uh, continue my education. So I always believe that uh, it's, it's always it's our duty to give back to the community, give back to the, our home country. And, and so I started uh, uh, doing, some, uh, uh, doing something which I can be helpful to the community. Uh, number one, uh, I become very active in uh, our own physician, uh, American uh, Association of Physicians of Indian Origin, because in the early 80s there were a lot of uh, issues affecting our Indian uh, physician of Indian origin, uh, particularly the discrimination in the job and uh, discrimination in the hospital privileges as well as licensing issues. And I was the first Indian American physician who got appointed by Governor Christy Whitman of New Jersey in medical licensing, member of medical licensing board. And uh, during my tenure in medical licensing board, I tried to help those Indian uh, physician, young Indian physicians who were coming uh, from India, who had 10 plus two education. They were not getting license in the state of New Jersey. And I am the one who really did all the correspondence from back home from university back home, uh, a medical council from the India, and uh, and and convince our board, mem my colleague board members uh, in New Jersey licensing board, to how to resolve this issue so our young uh, physician who are coming from India uh, can get a medical license in state of New Jersey. The second front, I was also president of Indian American Forum for Political Education. It's a grassroots political uh, education act, uh, organization where we educate uh, our uh, 
Indian American fellows, uh, uh, colleagues and fellows and our, our brothers, sisters, how to get involved in the mainstream uh, polit uh, politics because unless you get involved in mainstream American uh, or participate in mainstream American politics, you, you cannot protect your own interest and you cannot claim uh, uh, your own uh, piece of pie, American piece of pie. And, and therefore, I always believe that I, I must uh, empower uh, second generation and we started the internship at Capi in Capitol Hill, Th thereby all these college students uh, got uh, exposed to uh, go go government working in, uh, in Washington, D.C. And today we can see the fruits of that uh, activities, what we did in early 90s, that uh, quite a few uh, our uh, uh, interns and those who participate in our forum activity, they are now governor of Louisiana or governor of uh, South Carolina, and uh, over 200 of our uh, uh, second generation Indian Americans are are uh, take, uh, employed by uh, or they are working with uh, in White House and senators and congressmen's offices. If India's relationship with the United States is stronger today, Mr. Parikh's role can't be ignored in achieving that. I believed and we, our, my, all other uh, politically active friends believe that uh, any sale of uh, F-16 or AVAX to Pakistan is not good for either uh, country, neither for India nor for Pakistan. Because what we want in that South Asia, where India and Pakistan and other Bangladesh is there, we want the peace. We want we want prosper, uh, prosperous Pakistan and prosperous India. And therefore, we thought that if uh, if uh, USA sells uh, this kind of weaponries to Pakistan, that will uh, kind of uh, 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 increase the uh, arm race between India and Pakistan. And, and, and that is not good for uh, neither in, uh, India or Pakistan. And therefore, there, there, that's why we, were, we, we did all this community, we galvanized whole community and, and uh, educate the uh, uh, congressmen and senators why they should not sell uh, F-16 or AVAX plane to the uh, Pakistan just to make uh, India and Pakistan uh, area more peaceful, more friendly and more prosperous. Okay. Well, uh, I, I, was, I was one of the core group of the uh, community leaders who are involved in uh, U.S.-India uh, civil nuclear deal uh, from the beginning, from 2004. Uh, I'm the first one who wrote a letter to then chairman of uh, 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 India, I mean, sub, uh, South Asian Committee on, uh, on the Arms uh, to uh, uh, Chairman uh, Hyde. Uh, and uh, we pledged him uh, or we requested him that uh, U.S.-India nuclear deal is good for both USA and India because India needs energy and India needs some source of uh, alternate source of energy uh, because India is a very developing country right now and, uh, and USA also, it's good for USA that way USA gets uh, uh, another market for their nuclear uh, know-how, nuclear research and nuclear uh, uh, business. Because of Mr. Parikh's efforts, India Caucus was born. Today, there are more than 180 members. You know, in early 90s, uh, where uh, U.S.-India relations were not as, as rosy and as good as uh, today, that time uh, we be believed that uh, in, uh, India needs some uh, friends in uh, Congress and Senate and therefore, uh, through the uh, Indian American Political Forum and other uh, social organizations like uh, Federation of Indian Association, we all uh, lobby uh, uh, for the formation of the India Caucus. And uh, in '93, we, because of our effort, uh, uh, we can able to start this India Caucus. And now today, we know that India Caucus has over 180 members with the second largest caucus in, in Congress, which is always help any issues or concern re related to the India and U.S.-India relations. The similar thing uh, we also lobbied and, and become successful was in 97, 98, uh, to start off uh, Friends of uh, India in the Senate, U.S. Senate. And that came into kind of uh, uh, implementation 
in uh, late 90s and early to, uh, 2001 uh, uh, time when uh, President Bill Clinton was uh, president. And I was very uh, lucky, fortunate that uh, uh, I accompanied President uh, Bill Clinton uh, during his official tour in 2000 as well as uh, during Gujarat earthquake uh, in 2004, 2003, when Gujarat earthquake happened. And really, uh, uh, it was great pleasure to work with the, uh, uh, President Bill Clinton uh, and uh, under his leadership. And also, I'm lucky that I, last November, uh, as a publisher of my uh, Parikwal World Media uh, Publishing Group, I was invited to join President Obama uh, uh, trip to India.